Hello and welcome to another update. In this one, I'll be covering the latest updates from the Ukrainian summer offensive. And starting out, we have here to the west of Velikano Vasilka, the Ukrainian forces continue their attacks in the direction of Novodarivka as well as Levatne, in the direction of the Russian positions east of these villages. So they are continuously attacking and probing the Russian defensive lines in these areas as they attempt to gain further control, taking control over the villages of Stepova, Ryudne and Rifnukil, here to the western parts of the occupied hills of the Russian forces. So something that gives the Russian forces an advantage on this part of the front line is that they are occupying the hills here to the west of Velika Novosilka. If the Ukrainians manage to push them out, they will have to attack from the north and from the west as they're doing, uh, which have leveled ground in comparison to the heights, while to the east the Ukrainians are at a height disadvantage. So this means that the Ukrainians are continuously trying to attack on the western and northern parts to push the Russian forces out of these hills, which will allow them to push further in this direction. And then we have this information from uh, Josh on Twitter, where he has analyzed the composition of the Ukrainian forces and how they're attacking. So what we can see is that they have two marine battalions, a tank brigade and a infantry brigade as well as an infantry battalion. The infantry battalions are here in the eastern parts as well as infantry brigade up by the river line. We have the tank brigade here further east and then we have the marines on the western parts. So essentially what we have seen is that the Ukrainian forces launched a attack with a tank brigade as they crossed through the fields. And this attack was followed by an infantry brigade as well as an infantry battalion who consolidated the gains of the Ukrainian forces. So that means that they have a lot of equipment uh, separated by the, a lot of infantry following it up. So this is why they have managed to capture these parts. They pushed through the open fields with their tanks and armored vehicles, and then they solidified the gains by sending the infantry afterwards. So most likely we'll see some further pushes by this tank brigade as they try to attack in the direction of Yurushina, where they'll be attacking at the eastern parts, separating the Russian forces holding the village from any reinforcements coming from the east. And then the infantry will consolidate the gains and push further north one from the northern parts of the front line. And similarly, here to the western parts, we have the Ukrainian forces, mainly consisting of marines, which means that they both include infantry as well as armored vehicles. So these are the elite forces of the Ukrainian forces, as well as marines, which means that they can cross the rivers as they have the necessary equipment to do so. So essentially what we're seeing is that the Ukrainians managed to capture these areas and then they're trying to hold them as the advances on the eastern parts continue as they try to capture the village of Yurashina, which will allow them to advance on Staromaisko from multiple directions, both from the north and from the east, which will allow them to capture the village. So they're trying to capture the village of Yurashina before they capture the village of Staromaisko, and also then they want to hold the village of Makarivka. Meanwhile, the Russian forces are trying to recapture Makarivka as that will allow them to then push the Ukrainian forces on the eastern parts back as they hold the village, which will allow them to flank the Ukrainian positions, especially the infantry fighting here by the river line. So that is their objective, which is why they're trying to hold the hill at all costs, which allow them to attack the Ukrainian positions trying to advance. And at the same time, it will allow them to hold the advantage of the high ground. So essentially what is happening is that the Russian forces are trying to prevent the Ukrainian armored brigades from advancing uh, as the longer it takes for them to reach the first defensive line, the longer they have to actually uh, weaken them, which will allow them to have a further hold on the first defensive line. Because if the Ukrainians manage to break through the first defensive line, then they will be able to consolidate their advance. And if they manage to break through at just one part, then they can essentially get rid of the rest of it. And the first line of defense is the only one that actually covers the whole front line. If the Ukrainians manage to break through it, then they can advance on a more important villages here on the eastern parts and be able to cut it off at a more suitable and easier location than at a straight brute force attack on Militopol. It can also spread out the Russian defenders, preventing them from covering the whole front line or at the very least weakening them at other parts of the front line 
in case they want to launch a other uh, offensive in this direction. They could also move westwards, which will allow them to flank the Russian positions, which will allow them to attack better with a head-on attack. However, all of this requires for them to actually be able to break through the Russian defenses here at the north of the first offensive line and actually break through the first offensive line because so far we have seen that they are only attacking in these villages here to the north and they've managed to capture these four villages. However, the Russians are actively counter-attacking and they seem to be holding on firmly to Yoroshina and Saramaisk. Meanwhile, the Ukrainian forces have managed to capture the village of Levatne fully and are now pushing eastwards of it. And at the same time, they have solidified their control over Makarivka. However, the Russian forces continuously counter-attack, attempting to recapture the village. As for the Orihiv part of the front line, it seems that it has reactivated again as the Ukrainian forces attack in the direction of Novopokrovka and they've managed to advance here in the eastern parts, which is the same area where they previously lost their Leopard tanks, which indicates that although they had suffered heavy losses earlier, they've managed to reorganize and now advance in this area, which means that whatever new strategy that they're using, I cannot identify it as I have yet to see any combat footage of the previous past days. However, it seems that they have managed to improve their strategies and are now advancing towards the village of Novokrovka, which allows them to attack the village from now two directions, from the northern parts and from the western parts. In other news, away from the front lines, the latest reports from the Wagner PMC is that they will return to the finding on August 5th. However, this is most likely not going to be true. Uh, Remy says, always remember nobody would say the exact date publicly. Last time they mentioned a date for the withdrawal out of Bakhmut, but they withdrew a whole week before it. So we may see it at the middle to end of July, most likely prior to the August 5th date. And where their operations will be, that is unknown, but it seems that the latest news indicate that it will be in the direction of Belkorod or Kharkiv, as they'll either solidify the borders or advance within the Ukrainian territory by the borders. Then we have this footage from the Orihiv sector where Ukrainian forces attempt to withdraw and evacuate damaged equipment from the battlefield. But while they're doing so, they are being fired upon. And it's very interesting because we see these explosions happening right next to the target, which indicates the lack of precision weaponry as the Russian forces have the accurate coordinates. However, they are lacking in precision weaponry just a one meter difference makes a difference between whether or not the vehicle is hit. And when I say they have a lack of it, it's not that they are completely lacking in it. It's just that it isn't the norm with Russian weaponry. They have a little less accuracy than Western weapons, but this little less accuracy makes a lot of difference. In other news, we have this uh, video here. It is a video of a Ukrainian tank column. It seems to be similar to that of the first days of the offensive. It seems to be some T-64 BV tanks. But what's interesting is that it's a very long column. Whether or not these will be used on the front line or if it's an old video or not, I'm not really sure. But what I can tell is that if it is accurate, then we may soon see another armored push on the front line somewhere, either by Orihiv or by the northeastern parts by Velika Novosilka. And that is going to be all for this update. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.